this video I'm going to show you how to do brims for hats. First of all I'm going to show you how to draft a flat pattern brim or flat pattern brims I should say and then I'm going to talk about shaping a felt brim for a blocked crown. I hope you find it useful. Any questions just ask me. Right we're going to talk now about drafting out some patterns for hats. And um, there are lots and lots and lots of tutorials on YouTube to show you how to draw an oval. But if you're making hats, you'll have at least one hat block or part of a hat block, hopefully. And I'm going to use, you can use the whole hat block, but I'm going to use this base, um, string base, to draw my first oval. And this is going to be the head size of my hat, which is 22 and a half inches. So I'm just going to draw around. Okay. So there's the, the head in the middle. Okay. Now, of course, we need to have, if we're doing a flat pattern hat, or a felt brim and you're doing it separate to the crown, you will need a piece for stitching. So what am I talking about? An allowance, a seam allowance. See, I don't know what I'm doing half the time. It's been a long day. So I'm gonna mark round uh, just 10 centimeters all the way around on the inside. And that's going to be my seam allowance. Doing this sitting down, which is not good because you don't get a true, a true vision. So I'll have to stand up and do it. No, I'm not going to muck about doing perfect uh, joining. It's just join the dots here. So. So that's my seam allowance all around there. Okay. Now you've got to decide on the width of your brim. Now for this, I am going to do an oval brim. And I'm just going to, because I haven't got a lot of paper, I was going to do a circular one, but I'll have to work out how to show you that after the event. So I'm going to just work out how wide I want my brim and I'll make it I'll make it four inches which will be a nice big brim so mark four inches all the way around and again do quite a few marks so that you can join them up neatly and if you want to use a compass or something to do it but uh, Right, and again we're joining up the dots. not perfect but you get the you get the gist of it and now we're going to cut that out so we're going to cut out this middle section and then the brim itself right I've ironed my piece of paper to try and get it to lay flat so right, we've cut out an oval brim, but because there's no shaping, this will be a flat brim. Unless, of course, you make it in floppy fabric and then it will be a floppy brim, but it will be dead flat. Now, as I showed you before, if you want to do a concave or a convex shape,
what we need is to cut a line, then cut out like that. And that will move your brim up. Keep this the same. It's hard to do on a bit of paper, isn't it? Put it on this side as well for a minute. Right, so what we have now is we have a brim that has some shape. It will go down or it will go up. Now, the more slits you make and the more you cut, the better the up or down turn. So let's, I should have marked the center spots before I started this. Make sure not to alter the size here, otherwise you'll have altered the head size. So we move it over. Okay, so you see it's it's made it very curved. But again, it's it's pretty shapeless. It's just a curve down or a curve up, like a like a lampshade would be. It's worth cutting out a few brims like this and just experimenting because of course You've still got an oval, it's not a round brim, this one, remember, so you've still got an oval shape. But if you want to change the shape of the brim, you can either do that before before you cut and, and make changes to it, or you can do it after, you can cut bits out. You could have had the head size moved over, and I'm gonna do a round, I'm gonna do a round one, but I can't do it just at the moment till I get some bigger paper. Anyway, so that gives you a basic, a basic shaped brim. But if you're doing a hat that you want a nice, a fairly slim brim, and you want to cut a flat pattern out, you don't tend to do it this way. You do it another way. Right, so I'm gonna show you how to draw a basic brim shape for a flat pattern hat and then I'm going to show you ways that you can alter that but this really will be a master for, for most brims. So first of all you need to decide how big your he head circumference is. Now I'm going to do it to 22 and a half inches because that's about average and then what you'll need is a piece of string so not the piece of string in one end. Now half of 22 and, a, 22 and a half is 11 and a quarter and I want a piece of string 11 and a quarter inches long. So I'm going to mark 11 and a quarter there 
and I'm going to do a knot on the string there. So on my 11 and a quarter inches. Now I make all my patterns um, in Inkscape on the computer because it's more accurate and it's a lot easier than this method. But for many of you, that's not going to be a possibility. So, right, so we have our piece of string, 11 and a quarter inches where, my, where I've marked it with a little black line. So let's move our ruler out. Excuse me sniffing. I don't know what's the matter with me today. So what we've got to do is put a pin to hold the string on our 20, uh, 11 and a quarter inch. What we're doing is we're doing half a brim here. Now what we need to do is curve this and pin it down to get our rough curve shape for the brim. So I'm gonna do that. It's, not, it's a bit tricky. It's a bit tricky. Right, so we've got a curve for our brim, a sort of a bit of an oval shape. And now I'm going to use my pen to mark that shape. Okay, take my pen and my string out. put all that to one side so that's half the brim I'll just run over it a bit more there we are and I'm going to do a straight line there just to know that that is the front the front of my brim Now, how big you make your brim is up to you entirely. I mean, it can be any size you want, but I'm just doing a master, really, for the moment. So what did I make that? Two and a half. Now, this end will be the end that you sew, that you join together. Now, normally, at the back of the hat, you don't want such a big area because, obviously, you don't want it catching on the neck. So I'm just going to make that end two inches okie doke and now I've got to mark where I want my brim so I'm going to go two and then get a little bit bigger as I go down so two and a quarter two and a half two and a half what was this bit this bit was Two and a half, yeah. So I'm going to make it about like that. Okay. Now I'm going to draw a line to join those dots up. So there we are. We've got half, half a brim. Now don't forget that you're going to want a seam allowance on all these sides. You're not going to want it on this side for the moment, just on these sides. So decide how big you want your seam allowance. We'll do it 10 centimetres. Right, so you can see I've drawn in a seam line all around that edge, around that edge, and around that edge. Now I'm going to fold this in half and cut it out as one. So,
So I'm going to cut it. I'm going to fold it on that fold line. And I'm going to pin it down while I cut it. Well, that was poo. I was videoing away and realised my video had switched off. So I'm not sure where I got to. So, right, so I've cut my brim shape out. And what I was showing you is you can alter the, the slope of the brim because that's, you know, that's your brim. But you can alter the slope by cutting it at points and either overlapping it Mind you, you've got to keep this the same, otherwise your head size will change. Or, opening it out like so. Now, what I suggest doing is cutting one out, well, cut a few out, and then trial and error, see what sh shape brims you can get. Now, the thing with this one is, this is a back join brim. Now you might not always want the brim to join at the back. So now we've got to discuss a brim joining at the side. So, back in the mo. So you've got your brim, you're gonna play about with it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna change it slightly. So where I've slit it there, I'm gonna undo, and I'm gonna join this to this. Now remember, you've got an overlap there because you've cut um, a seam allowance. Oh, I've got that in shot. So make sure you your seam allowance is on top of your seam allowance, otherwise your head size won't be right. So there we are. So now we've got a brim that we can join at the side of the hat. And you'll see it's a totally different a different shape so that's the basics of cutting out brim patterns uh, for flat pattern hats and what I thought I'd do is I'm going to make some hats with patterns that I'm that I'm making that I'm showing you how to do now remember if you're having a side seam you might want to put it on ahead and decide where your side seam is going to be I just did it that way because I'd already cut the paper so normally it's about a third of the way around where your ear hole is. So we're going to play about with um, hats and brims. Now don't forget if you cut your brim on in the on the side like that, you will now have to add a seam allowance because there's no seam allowance now on either of these sides. So either cut a new pattern or Add your seam allowance when you're cutting your brim out, but I would suggest cutting this out as another template. Now, this is for a brim that's going to go downwards. If you want a brim that goes up, like so, oh, let's let's sellotape that together again. It's going, it's all going, it's all going wobbly. If you want a brim that goes up, sometimes you don't want it to have such a curve. You know, you don't want it to curve up. Now in that respect, you'd have to make this edge narrower. So you would have to do some equidistant, I'm just showing you for the minute, equidistant slits and fold the paper over to get narrower edge at this side okay and this will cause your brim to stand up more and not be so curved and that will would be the type of thing you might have on a on a sailor hat right so I've done a really quick drawing of a basic a basic shape that would be for a brim and it's not a great drawing but it will give you an idea so you've got your template so you've got your head size in here and you will have added your your um, seam allowances now because this is a back joining um, 
brim. You can then alter the, the shapes to how you want. So if you want it lower, say lower over the ears, you can you can do that and reshape it. Now obviously I'm doing it on the computer, but you you would do it however you wanted to do it. So you see you've got a shape there. So you can shape these. You can make it wider here, wider here, wider here. You can shape the sides. You know, you can do you can do lots of things once you've got a simple template cut out. You can alter it to be whatever you want it to be shape wise so it's best to cut out a few sort of templates and then copy them trace around them and fiddle about with them and, and see how you get on right with I'm going to do a brim on a, a blocked felt now to show you some ideas here so what I've done is I've blocked this felt onto a crown I haven't done anything with the brim so, and this was a capeline, so I've got plenty of brim area. So what I'm going to do is take this off the block. I'll show you how to make these blocking springs in another video. So, it's off the block and I'm going to just cut the crown out. Right, it's just roughly shaped because what I want to do is put that on a head and see how I want to shape it for the style I want. So I'm going to do a 20s style cloche. Now, of course, that's the bit I'm going to use for my brim. I'm just going to use a mannequin head to decide if I want to come up or down or whether I'm happy with the crown as it is. I am going to go up at the back because I think it makes it more comfortable. So I'm going to get on with marking that out with a piece of chalk and just cutting it. Right, so what I've done is I've just shaped the back. It fits nicer into the neck and I've trimmed it a bit more around the edge. And I've tried it on my head just to see if I'm happy with the shape. Now, to be honest, I probably could have done with a higher block because I would have liked the front lower. So I'm going to have to adjust my brim so that I feel it looks good. Now, because we've cut this off, it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit very well and it's going to be too big because I've made this area bigger, um, smaller rather. <laughs> Hang on. It's not very easy to show. So there's my brim and I don't like what it's doing. It's going to stick up and it's going to be too high. So I'm going to cut the brim and now what I'm going to do with the brim is I'm going to steam it into a flatter shape. So I'm going to go off and do that and come back to you. So what I've done is I've got my brim on the ironing board and my steam iron. I'm going to steam both sides like so. And then I'm going to coax it into a flatter shape. So I'm going to cover it with a pressing cloth and steam and press it and pull it into a flatter shape. As you can see, it's flattening out now. I mean, you still want some curve to it, but I want it to just be flatter. So. Yeah, I think that'll, I think that'll do me. That's a bit more there. 
Okay, now I'm going to trim this so that it's a nice straight edge and then we'll go back to the drawing board. <laughs> so what I've done is I've worked out the rough shape that I want my brim. Now you can have your brim any shape you like, but I've decided to make it asymmetrical and I've decided to make the join a feature of the hat. Now I've done a rough chalk mark. Now it's always best if possible, to do this with a scrap piece of fabric or something first. But you know me, I'm just going in for the kill and if it's all wrong, it's all wrong. Um, anyway, I'm going to cut it out. <laughs> done is you can brush the chalk mark however I've cut it out and I'm now going to hold it up to my hat and see how it looks let's see if I'm happy with it right let's see if I think I'm going to be happy with it so I'm going to have the brim down this side and coming up and I'm going to have to reshape that side to effectively have something nice there I hope you can see roughly where we're going with it. Now what I'll have to do now is just shape the ends where I want them to cross over. Let's see if I can put it up like that. I want probably this front to be able to flick back. And then I shall stitch it very carefully to the top with stab stitching with uh, invisible stitching. Now I will cover the top with a ribbon and the inside will be covered with a Petersham band so that you won't see it. So I'm going to crack on with that now. Now bear in mind that if you stitch the brim underneath the crown you've effectively made the inside smaller. So you'll need to give it a blast of steam and put it back on the block so that you're happy with the size. If you sew the brim to the top of the crown, it won't alter the size inside. But I wanted to do it this way round. So you can see I've re-steamed it and popped it back on. No, just a quick blast of steam. Then I'm going to finish shaping the brim and stitching it all together.